Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name's Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. Jimmy, we got a we got a rare treat under the microscope today. A lot of foreplay up front, though, man. What you got? Oh. <laughs> Hard for me to concentrate on anything besides a giant Alex Toth book. But Street Angel, Deadly Girl Alive. I've been getting questions about what's in these two books. They're completely separate. Uh, totally different. No overlap. So if you bought one of them and you like it, definitely seek out the other one. And Deadliest Girl Alive, that's some of my newest comics from Image Comics. Full color, superhero, ninja on a skateboard. Perfect for any fan of action and superhero comics. Patreon, Patreon.com slash Ed is where I'm serializing my current comics project, Red Room. These are bootlegs that were made from the high-res files on uh, the Patreon. Uh, three bucks get you the archive. It's about murder on the dark web for fun and profit as a sick and disgusting entertainment source. Uh, two stories are up there uh, as well. As we speak, new strips every Tuesday. Once again, though, for the early adopter, because uh, there will be a proper print edition that will be available in comic shops and online in uh, mid-2021, Jim. So on the channel, uh, it's it's on the record. We are giant marks for Alex Toth's cartooning and illustration. Uh, you submitted a book uh, some time ago called One for the Road as being like the ultimate, uh, as the ultimate kind of um, Alex Toth masterpiece comic. And uh, I took a look. I want to give some shouts, man. Uh, AEindex.com, artistedictionindex.com is a website. If you're on the fence about picking up an artist edition, you go there. This guy catalogs them all, shows off a couple of pages, and then you can make your you know, more wise uh, buying decisions at that point. I took a look on, on that site, uh, you know, decided to buy myself a couple Christmas presents. And when I saw that this even existed, I was so close to pulling the trigger anyhow. Let me take a look inside and to see that there's a lot of process materials. How could you not buy this thing, man? So I'm putting, I'm submitting this book. It has to be this, not just Bravo for Adventure, uh, the, okay. the other thing. I'm submitting this book as the masterpiece Alex Toth book. And you know what? It's still available right now. So subscribers, <laughs> if you even think you're going to want it, the kayfabe effect is real, man. We sold out a bunch of books uh, in, in recent weeks, man. And I would bet you this one's going to go quick. Yeah, and I love living in a world where this exists, but it should not be in print. This right. should have been out of print the day that it was available to people to buy. Uh, this Alex Toth might agree with you if he were with us today that this is the best Alex Toth. This is uh, part of the reason this artist edition exists. This is one of the few comics that he saved the artwork for uh, because it was near and dear to his heart. Uh, you know, one of his personal favorites set in a time period that he just adored and loved. So we're going to see a lot of that love on the page. Before we dive in, I want to point out Library of American Comics. As far as I know, this is Dean Mullaney. There may be another person or two involved in that. They do a lot of great work of reprinting and preserving and making beautiful editions of, uh, you know, older artist work. Uh, one that stands out, Noel Sickles, big influence on, on Alex Toth. Um, did a beautiful edition for the Library of American Comics, but also four big volumes of Alex Toth books were produced from the Library of American Comics under Dean Mullaney that are all just treasures, full of uh, great art and his backstory and kind of his professional history. So he's another guy I wanted to give uh, some some shout outs to and uh, two good places. And I'm getting zero kickbacks. In fact, man, I would like some kickback. <laughs> like, let's 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 do a deal if if something works out. But uh, CheapGraphicNovels.com and AtomicEmpire.com, uh, two places where you could get artist editions at a little bit of a discount, and you will be surprised which out-of-print ones they still have in, in their warehouse. The Storenko one uh, is on Atomic Empire, which blew me away because you go on eBay, you're paying three dollars $400. Like you're paying, paying a premium to, to get that book when you could get it for cover price or even a little bit less on Atomic Empire, man. Should we dive in, Jimmy? Yeah, man. I've been waiting for this. Ever since you told me you ordered this, Ed, I've been waiting. So this is very awesome. So because it is a Dean Mullaney thing and still artist edition, there are some deviations. Like, we don't have the big the big uh, end papers. That's a bummer for me. You know, like, like everybody that makes an artist edition, blow up a panel. Do right. something with that space. It's such a giant canvas to use. You know what? Com compositionally, something that I wanted to speak of, like, you see this line, like, is this a design choice? Like, like he wanted this to be exactly pointed, like at his eye. Oh yeah, I think so. That was a big thing. I, I've heard other artists talk about that whenever they were starting out and seeing like all the directional devices and thinking like, how do you manage that? Right. You know, a guy known for composition and design is going to figure it out. 
And this is awesome to be just starting out to see pencil lines because so much of what I see of Toth, it's all that pen stuff from the animation character design sheets to all of his inks and doodles, which, you know, there's an abundance of those. So it's awesome to see the pencil work for this stuff. Yeah, for sure. And look, there's like very little like underdrawing. He's, it really is. He's kind of just going in and, and adding stuff, but he will draw through. So he's definitely has an idea of like what's exactly behind this guy. You That's see the, really neat. the full wings of the... It's like layers things. or something in today's nomenclature. Right. And, you know, 1979, the, the date here. So this is post his animation experience, which was built on lots of drawings really fast. So it could be part of the reason you don't see that underdrawing is it's just intrinsic at, at this point of his of his career. So we're going to get the original art for Bravo, but then we're going to get a lot of color guides. We're going to get a lot of uh, false starts, a lot of half penciled pages, thumbnails. Uh, it's it's all here, man. And and uh, you know if you go back into the Wayback Machine, Time Machine, get into your TARDIS, you could go visit him. One thing that always is hard to impress over uh, a screen mm -hmm. is seeing these things at size. Yeah. There's such a power to them. I, I felt that way about like the Mike Mignola when I'd see the Hellboy and Hell pages. There's just something about the actual size where these things, as good as they look in print, it's like, oh man, I thought it was perfect. And now you see it in size and it's even better somehow. Yeah, we get to see how his his little flare pen reacts over time in terms of say. archivalness and, and uh, it's starting to starting to fade on the edges here. Uh, this is interesting because it's it's such a big character. And you could draw the whole face, but he just chooses not to. Yeah, yeah, that's the economy. Th those are the choices that make him him. But speaking of the markers, like he's written articles in old magazines about markers and, you know, trying new art materials. So you see it on that page of like, careful, you know, with some of these markers. <laughs> it may not hold up. Look at this application of like the uh, little... Um like a grease pencil or mm -hmm. whatever on a, on a textured paper, it sort of sells us on what the toothiness of the paper is because obviously you can't capture 100% of the original art in terms of paper quality. It is everything. wild seeing like the different marker and how this one bleeds. And I assume this is probably also a pen or marker yeah. and doesn't have that bleed, you know, different ink or whatever the case may be. I don't see lettering lines, guidelines for this lettering. And he does tons of this lettering. Mm -hmm. You know, at some point, we're going to look at an animation article that he writes completely like that. Uh, I, he, he, it's real possible he just cleans up real good because you don't see many Aaron Pencil marks true. either. So that would be just one step too far, man, if he's lettering perfect. He's a cartoonist that does a lot of lettering. You know, you see it all here. It looks great. But even if you look at like some of his DC comics and things like Black Canary, he does a lot of lettering. You yeah. know, at a time when... Most cartoonists and comic book artists aren't doing their own lettering. He does. Yeah, this is interesting. Like, I wonder what, the, what how that's going to shake out in the published version. Yeah, a little bit of gray. Very uh, strange. Strange to see it used just a tiny bit. Yeah, once again here, too. Just a touch. You know, he's down with aviation, aer aer aeronautical stuff, man. So that's that's the story, I guess. Yeah, I think of this as, uh, you know, you could almost put it next to Rocketeer or something for time period. This is incredible. Yeah. So he drew the entire uh, street across <laughs> the street from the bar and decided that you don't need that, man. You just So he whited all of that out, put the uh, the name of the diner or bar or whatever, and it just frames this guy perfectly. I love the airplane models hanging from the from the ceiling. They all have a, their own gravity to them that that makes it feel that makes it feel real. I think that's one of the things that he has that and Kirby had that where it was like things have a mass they they feel like they have a weight, and it was always something with digital effects and things that like that's the longest piece for like the digital effects to figure out how do you have the physics there, but that's what makes the world look real. Cleaning up his uh, his his smoke and and this is a lot more scratchy application than than like I'm used to mm -hmm. with my typical Toth. Comics. I like seeing this stuff. Yeah. We see a lot of artists, that's how they'll use like a white material is, eh, it's more detail than I want. Let's clean it up. That's a beautiful How about that panel. acting right there? Beautiful. And then just like taking take an extra effort with those facial details to get them as kind of subtle and elegant as, as possible to, to make that face as beautiful as it turned out. Good lighting on these guys. And, and the lighting is just in this shadow. Like he's not really adding so much right. on these characters, but when you add that shadow, it's like letting us know that the lighting is that way. That's a cool trick. Oh my goodness, dude. He drew the whole guy. <laughs> he, 
I don't know if the, the camera's picking this up, but he drew the guy, inked him just as traditionally yeah. as everything else, and then said, nah, man, it's more dramatic to just have the silhouette. It's really great seeing these because the materials do have broken down a little bit. Yeah. You know, you can see it with whatever he's coloring in. It's a different ink than what he drew the line with. But, you know, you can see it in the overlap. This really feels like Timothy Dalton. Look, here's some, uh, a, a, like, a light material to white out the fingers to make those knuckles, you know, where he wants those defined. And how about that bush texture, man? Just yeah. These little, little circles. That's all it takes. And how do you make a car go fast? Get it off the ground, That's man. right. <laughs> Get it the fuck off the ground. One of his great DC works, Hot Wheels. Yes. You know, like, and, and, you know, the book that I submit as being a great one, one for the road, like, he could draw cars in motion really exceptionally well. All this stuff looks so painstakingly referenced. None yeah, of this looks sure made does. up. Not one of these things looks kayfabed out. That's what he criticizes, uh, you know, like like Steve Rude for in that Johnny Quest correspondence is uh, reference. Got to yeah. reference this stuff. And 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 he, it seemed to be like uh, a kind of academic exercise for for himself too. Like when he's drawing these things, like what he would say to to Rude is like, I now know where where the hall is and the this and the that. Like so he's drawing the things just like uh, traditional figure figure drawing uh, classes. They'll for you to learn the different muscles and stuff like he would take that upon himself when he's referencing different objects so he's great with black and white and lighting here's a cool example you have your desk lamp so it's just like the guy's lower parts of his arms and you can see that shadow go up unbelievable <laughs> unbelievable and then like the other thing that i always note is like where he where he like you know like has the hard pass when it comes to the lighting and like he's just letting these faces be illuminated so much the body language. The body language, man. Yeah. All these characters. All of the are great silhouette actors. stuff is really strong. So you know the stairs, perfect. They they look more complex than the drawing actually makes them. I mean that's a really simple drawing, but it reads as like realistic stairs. And then whenever he decides to use shadow on his figures, and you have the light background. This is one hundred and one kind of stuff. Yeah. You, you feel you feel what's going on here man like there's definitely uh, a very important destination at the very least I really appreciate seeing his lettering like this at actual size sure it's so distinct you see so much of it whenever you look up his art to see it you know in, in this I mean that's markers mm -hmm. some of my favorite stuff in, in in comics is when the cartoonist will give you give you a well-drawn eye but then go right. polka dots every now and then. I'd be curious how this printed in right. the final piece. So yeah. it's a very light, almost a white, uh, you know, China pencil or something. Not even sure what's making that. And it shows up on screen, those motion lines, but it's more gray, uh, certainly more gray than white, but maybe even closer to black than white. For sure. And same, same effect here. You know, a That's chalker, beautiful. some kind of chalk or something to make those marks. This is a beautiful page with the nice ha-ha, close-ups of faces. Yeah, the great acting. That that profile on that girl is perfect, man. I love the, the texture of this like tweed jacket. This is something that you'll see probably as we continue to flip through. The foreground object, it's silhouette. Oh, look, there's some more of that. Yeah, I don't know what that is. But man, whenever it gets photographed and it has to be black or white, I, I am curious yeah. how, how exactly it looks. This is great. This feels like something that you might see in Patience, Dan Klaus' Patience. Yeah, you know, the... nice pop arty piece. And he's able to actually, with those shit markers, get the flare lines, get the thick thin. That's a, that's, it would be fun to watch him draw that. Man. Oh, I'd, I'd love to see him draw. I wonder if any video footage exists of him drawing. That's cool. That is great. Holy shit, man. You're going to see that in your nightmares tonight, Kayfabers. <laughs> and then in my next comic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that character design. Just this little stuff, man. Like, with the light shine off of that one. And by the way, we've seen a couple of these full moons. He's another... Uh, gotta love the full moon. <laughs> the full moon, the car headlight, of course. But there's this character with that white face. Yeah. It's all bandaged up. Man with the getaway face. <laughs> Use of white media 
on this debris, man. It really sells the speed of the car, like all this stuff getting kicked up. This is almost like a high a high contrast photo or something. Uh, it's it's amazing. Like looking at the pencils earlier on and seeing that he doesn't do much underdrawing, it's just like he knows where the lines are supposed to go. Toiling a little bit on Chris Farley. <laughs> like right? Like This is a great mouth and very expressive full face and expressions. A little sandstorm kind of. He often does a very simple fingers. Uh, you know, like like a lot of cartoonists, you get knuckles and stuff. You look at like Marvel DC stuff. There's a lot of laboring on them. Right. He'll do just. It's just open. It's just a shape. I find that interesting. That's something that I I do a little bit because hands are hard to draw. Like we, if you make comics, you probably spend a bunch of time trying to figure out hands and drawing them. Right. And he really does some stuff that was not typical at the time for for fingers. Look, he's able to pull off black foreground, black background figures. I'd be curious to see this in print from the time period because it's real possible that that looks different now than it did when he drew it. Right. Due to the bleeding of the markers. This is amazing. All this movement. How much, I mean, if you told me that was a Mike Mignola sort of page, I'd believe you, right? I, the compositions, the page layouts, very much in line. And that's spectacular. For abstract stuff, the smoke, to work that well, incredible incredible man look at look at the scene and everything you have on display there it's a setting sun hitting the underside of those clouds check out that panel i like this kind of stuff i do this where it's like try to figure out where to put your lettering right it's like part of the panel have that space put in there and also by the way man this is this is letter on the page so there, it's like you gotta you gotta have some confidence man where to where to where to end those things man how far to, to bring the words down like there's a lot of arrangement that that goes into that and i think we will see some pages where uh he pencils the lettering that's good yeah there's some adjustment of eyebrows with that white cover-up medium a lot of a lot of little stuff man uh friend of the show brian moss columbus ohio he he owns a couple toth pieces and there will be like a complete drawing on one side with, like a lot of uh you know, more detailed than what the final piece mm -hmm. would be, you know, like he really will draw a lot and then just take a lot out. So things like this, he thought, he thought twice. And I wonder when he decides on that, I wonder if he draws the page and then puts it away for a while, gives it a good once over before it's time to go to press and then makes those other adjustments. Or if he does it in real time as he's drawing, like, oh no, that's no good. Yeah, I don't know, but man, that's a nice page. You get a lot of great Toth stuff from the lettering effects good figures and then like i like this composition it's it's kind of i don't know why that strikes me but it's really neat and it's kind of neat to see her head positioned at the top of the panel you know normally i think you would get a head somewhere in the middle with the word balloons above it jimmy i got some new stuff i'm going to be stealing man <laughs> rounded glass on a ground nobody does that everybody <laughs> draws flat ass glass you have a round bottle and you smash it over somebody's head cut to the ground it's all flat glass I feel like that would you could use this in red room yes somebody could do something creative with that yes look at this guy man that's great yeah that really is fun when he dips into the awesome like stuff. corporate lettering on these crates you know what man i don't like this era of cars like I, i'm not a huge fan of this era this is my favorite car i think i've seen depicted like this it has such mass and weight and volume wow really like the scale of that whole world going on behind the main characters how about that for a choice of no background those two characters walking out of the shadow yeah yeah it's got to be everything is in the words on that panel all right 1982 so a few years later yeah look at the lettering oh i know that's a pretty interesting panel you know for at for a guy who's great at lettering and design like He's doing some really out there stuff. Oh, dude, you you just wait till you see this. Every page of this is going to be that energy. So I don't know how well this is showing up, but these have faded considerably. Like these are very light gray. Some of these marks, which you know, got it has to be just due to the marker material that he's drawing with. Right. Like, look at this, man. It's like a Frank King gasoline alley. Like we're gonna, you know, go to the art gallery and bizarre oh uh, yeah it's like a funhouse mirror kind of gimmick yeah this really is like there's there's like a very specific frank king 
Sunday strip where he takes Skeezix to the to the uh, to the Met or something to go check out a bunch of art, and then they get launched into the paintings. Like, look at this. Yeah, dude. that's amazing. That one is awesome. That is a wild page. Unbelievable. Got some more Gestalt going on here. Just so much fun to see him completely in control. Like, working from his own imagination as opposed to a script. Dealing with an editor or anything like that. Wow. Look at the line. Like, it's an abstract element in the middle of a, you know, somewhat realistic comic. And it's it's dude it's the juxtaposition it's like look at this man it's a it's like a puddle jumper and then we're mapping its its territory lands and then a fly swatter comes yeah. down and and like this plane in the far off distance it's like a fly that's a freaking amazing page man all these fly swatters are some some metaphor happening jim and then all the patterns are always really great. You know, animal skin kind of organic like patterns here, but then turning the stars into patterns and then breaking those into like objects. The body language and weight of this little guy is so perfect. Little yellow kid. This is a, such a peculiar... I've never seen this piece before, so this is just new comics for me. Right. So peculiar. I feel like, like some Hugo Pratt in here. It's all wild. I, I've never seen a lot of this stuff, and it's just, just wild images. Love seeing abstract stuff like, ooh, let's draw lightning. Right. Because every cartoonist, I think, does that. Great so water. Hard. Good explosion. Mm -hmm. You could see Miller pulling from that. And that's almost Kirby Dots. It's striking. Ah, uh, dude, he's coming too, man, and he's fuzzy yeah. characters coming into focus. In the cool cartoon eyes, <laughs> post concussion eyes. Love it, love it. This is the kind of thing that you won't see. Like, I, I I've been thinking about just like arrangement of composition and stuff, and like cutting off the uh, wings, like behind that building. Like, I I wouldn't feel comfortable with doing that. But then it's like, of course, it, this is a perfect drawing. More of the flare with the big marker. Now we're getting into some stuff, Jimmy. We're getting into some stuff. Proto pages. This is awesome because we see the lettering in pencil, but you know what we don't see? Guidelines. Any guidelines. Yep. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Yep. It is amazing how few lines he uses to, to draw this stuff in. Just even look into, at this full start hand with the, holding uh -huh. the phone. Just the, it's all there, man. And there's no underdrawing. Wow. Doesn't that look Mignola-ish too, by the way? Like just... Ch -ch -ch. It's like the uh, directional device is the important thing. Yeah. We're mapping out that page. It goes all through. What a landscape. Yeah. A very minimal line. He sees it. This kind of stuff is really amazing to see. I love it. I love the stuff. It's one pencil panel. Right. Page. Like, just pieces. I just imagine somebody has a box of his art. The scraps that he saved. The old Coquille board. You would see that in like Ripley's Believe It or Not. And, you know, like working this way, like what's he have in mind? It reminds me of Jaime when you read like Jaime's approach to pages and it's like he'll have like a blank tear and kind of know what's going to go there, but might not draw it for weeks. <laughs> and it's like Sunday funny treatment or something, some weird format. He did some like like UFO stories and things that you can find, like flying saucer stuff. And I guess it probably stems from his love of aviation. But yeah. you get some of these like, you know, like that looks like one of those airplanes. It's a little bit odd, atypical for where air, airplanes develop towards. But then you'll see like his outer, like his flying saucer ships. And it's the same deal. Like you can almost see where you just push some of these stranger designs even further. 
Right. Like I said, that article on pens is fascinating because he goes through and lists like 10 of them and like 10 felt tip pens. So he was constantly playing with that stuff. Look yeah. at this shit, man. This is like the script. Wow. That's cool. These perfect little thumbnails. Figuring out these ships. Yeah, and that's like 8.5 by 11, you know, like a piece of uh, typing paper. You're right. It's, it's something that he's drawing on. So now everything that we just saw, like these are the uh, the color guides. Wow. Or maybe it's the, the actual color you know, that it's printed on, that it's printed from. I, d I never saw the actual book. Super cool. Yeah, I think those are color guides because that one page had, like, paint, like, paints on it. Yeah, you know what, though? Like, this might be an overlay of the black line. That's possible, yeah. Yeah, and, like, that would be for your foreign editions. Right. Separate, separate layer for uh, lettering. Uh, there's, oh, dude, look at that, man. The background is in there uh, during that piece. Is he is he fucking with his drawings, like, for himself? Like, oh, you know what? I never liked that. Yeah, like a reprint edition or something that he's cleaning up. And he does all these. These are his colors, right? Yes, yes. That's really fun to see. Because you can really see it with these two prime, you know, doing blue and oranges. It's the same as black and white. Like, you can almost see his thought process that design thought process. I don't know if this was printed in uh, in color or black and white. Yeah, I don't know much about Bravo at all. I don't either. I, I Like I said, I'm not that interested in that time period, so I've never tracked it down, which shame on me. Oh, uh, dude, like when I saw this up there, I'm like, what, why Why were we all being like name whores or like character whores? Like you want to yeah, see this or that? It's like, I'm ashamed. how could I'm you not have this? <laughs> Cut this out. <laughs> I like wow. that drawing. Oh, and, and he took the... Uh, this was lettered, like I said, like there was that corporate lettering, and it's not there on that. Wow. So, Jimmy, yeah, this is my submission for Greatest Toth comic, but that not is a pretty book, but not Bravo for Adventure. This book specifically, with all of the editions, the actual scans of original artwork, like this is the Toth book that should be in everybody's, the Toth comic book that should be in everybody's uh, library. It's beautiful to see his pages at actual size, Jimmy. I. I'm kind of jazzed up to get back to work, man. How about you? I'm going to go home and break all my pencils. <laughs> <laughs> K favors, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. What do you have in stores, Jim? Street Angel, Deadliest Girl Alive from Image Comics. Superhero Ninja Girl on a skateboard, perfect for any reader. And the Plain Janes, outcast uh, high school students that turn to public art to liven up their lives. Patreon.com slash Ed is where I'm serializing my Red Room comics. Three bucks get you the archive. There are almost two complete stories up there now. New strips go live every Tuesday. You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter to keep up with everything we have going on. You can find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Jimmy, give them one more set of marching orders and we'll go back to business. Read more comics. <laughs>